Welcome back to a very interesting video I've made in a while. Today I will show you how to create this cool text wrapped with circles that react to the other layers. The project files for this can be found for free on my Patreon. I will put the link in the description below if you want to download it. Alright, so first let's take the text tool. Let's write something and align this in the center. Then let's take the ellipse tool. Let's draw a perfect circle. And then I'll also change the size to about 50 pixels. So now what we want to do is to create a lot of duplicates and make this shape layer wrap around every letter of our text layer. So you have two options for this. And first one it's to take the text, sorry, the shape layer and duplicate it manually and then create a lot of duplicates until you have every letter filled out. So this would be one option. But the other one would be to use a plugin. So for example, I have the Rock Repeater plugin I developed myself. So if you want, you can find this on my Patreon. I'll put the link in the description below. You can use this plugin to fill out every text with any shape basically. So for this, you choose the distance between shapes and then you select the text layer and then the layer that you want to wrap around the text. And then you click on create instances. It will take a couple of seconds because it's doing a lot of things in the background, but the actual result will look something like this. And you can see that we now have the instances composition that contains all the duplicates. So if I open this up, you can see we have 191 layers. So what I want to do now is to find the layers that are not part of any letter. So if I do a selection like this, you can see that some layers, for example, in this part are not part of any letter. So I will just delete them. So, you know, just because I don't want to have so many layers that are not actually doing anything. It's not wrong to have them. You can let them if you want but uh, the fewer the better and now let's create the master shape and by master i mean the shape that the other layers are going to react to so i'll just create a simple arrow you can create any shape it doesn't really matter you can even use a simple circle right i think it's fine so let's rename this to master this is very important and you will see why later then let's create a null object and let's search for a slider control effect and let's add this to the null object and then let's rename this to max push duplicate it and rename it to max distance duplicate it and rename it to color distance and for the max push i'll put 90 for the maximum distance 600 and for the color distance 206 and you'll see later why and let's also search for a color control effect add this as well and also rename it color control like this it's very important to have the name exactly like this. And for the color, I'll just put white for now. And also for the null, let's just rename this to null simple. So now let's go to the first layer. Press P4 position, hold option or alt if you're on Windows, click on the stopwatch to create an expression. And I will paste here some line of codes. I will also put this in the description if you just want to copy paste it. So basically we have layer 1 this layer, layer 2 the master layer, and here make sure the name of the layer corresponds to what you have here in parentheses. Then we have the position of, of both layers, then the distance between layers using the length function, then the direction vector using the normalized function, then I've linked the maximum distance property with the max distance slider, and the max push property with the max push slider. And then I have some 
math equations that ChatGPT wrote, so I can't really explain it. And we have an error, maximum push. So if I go here, yeah, it's not mass push, it's maximum push. So now it's fine. So let's go to the position property, select it, then go to edit, then copy expression only. Then select all the other layers and then go to edit and paste. All right, and now let's take the master shape and let me also change the color so we can see it better and also the rotation a bit. So now you can see how the other layers are reacting to it. And now if I go to the new layer, we can change these properties. So basically the maximum push is how much uh, distance the other layers are going to get uh, relative to my master shape. And then the maximum distance is how many layers are going to be affected. So now you can see that the layers are affected up to the O letter. And if I increase this, the effect will get much further up to the C letter, something like this. So I prefer to be around 600. And yeah, this is how it's, uh, it's working now. Now let's take care of the colors. So let's go into the first layer again then search for the fill effect and let's add this then let's toggle this down go to the fill color and create again an expression i'll paste here some line of codes again so basically i have the the two layers again the length of the layers then i've linked the color distance to the color distance slider then the original color with the color control slider and basically if the length between the two layers is less than the distance that I have on my new layer, then I'll get a random color. And if not, I'll get the original color. And we have an error here. Uh, what's happening? Oh, sorry. This is column, not slider. Yeah. And now this is working. So now let's take this effect. Let's copy it, then select all the other layers. And then let's paste the effect. So if I go to the new layer again, I have the original color to white, but as I said, you can now change it to what color you want. I will just let it to white for now. So if I take the master shape again, now you can see that if the distance between the master and any of the shapes is less than 206, then I will get random colors here. And if I increase the distance, you can see that more layers are affected. So now I want to create a path for the master layer. So let's take the pen tool and let's say we start from here. All right, something like this. Then let's take the path and let's copy it with command C. Then let's go to the master shape, P4 position, and then command V to paste the path. And then hold option and then extend these layers, these keyframes, sorry. We can just delete the shape layer we just created. So now we have the master layer traveling around the pet but it's not rotated correctly so rotate it like this and then go to layer transform auto orient and then orient along path and change again the rotation and also let's change the fill back to a red color and now we have something like this. Now let's go back to the comp one 
All right, so for this composition, I will quickly show you what I did because it's just the final adjustments. So first I have added a background layer and here I have added a gradient ramp effect. First color is this purple and the other one it's this blue color. And then for the points, the first one is here in the center and the other one is all the way here in the bottom. And then I've added a bit of curves as well, just to darken the background a little bit. Then if I go to my instances composition and I have first added some layer styles. First one is the inner glow and if I enable it, you can see the difference. And I've modified the opacity to be 60%, the source to center and the size to 20. Then I've also added an inner shadow effect. And for this one, I've just changed the angle to 320 degrees. Then let's go for the effects. So first one is the quick chromatic aberration. And this one is a plugin from Plugin Everything website. I think it's free, so I'll just leave a link in the description if you want to get it. And I've only modified the position to be 3.7 and the unmalt property to be checked. And then I've also used some glow. This is the deep glow effect that's also part of plugin everything, but I think this is a paid one. So if you don't have it, just use the simple glow that's already built into After Effects. So for this, I've changed the radius to 150 and the exposure to 0.3. And then I've added a blur layer. And here I've added the CC radial blur, the type to fading zoom, the amount to six, and then the center, I've linked this to the position of the master layer from the instances composition. So basically uh, the center of the blur will follow the arrow every time. So if I move this, you can see this point, it's following the arrow. All right, and then the last one, it's a noise layer. And for this, I've just used a simple noise effect with amount of 15%. And that's pretty much all. So that's the final result. Don't forget that you can download the project files for free. Or if you are a full member, you can access the Rob Repeater plugin along with premium projects and exclusive content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.